All right, so what's going on, guys? So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a follow-up to something that I talked about in my coilover install video, and that's going to be installing my energy suspension bushings. Now, here's the kit number. So this is just for your rear control arms. So all this kit includes is going to be the bushings for your upper control arm, your knuckle, and then these are actually for your lower trailing arm, which I don't have a spare at the moment. So this install of these is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, really depending on what kind of equipment you have. Like, so when you go to install some polyurethane bushings, you really have a couple options. Starting with kind of the least effective is, you know, just go at it with a hammer. I definitely would not recommend that. Um, there's different pullers that you can buy that will also work that's like a bolt and a washer method. Um, but the one that's kind of the most recommended is using a press or having someone with the press do them. Like, so it really doesn't make sense to go out and buy a press and then waste all that time trying to figure out how to use it, how the whole thing works. You risk like damaging some parts, especially if you don't plan on doing this uh, multiple times, right? It's really just the quicker and really smarter, easier solution to just, you know, drop it off at a shop, have them press them in, you know, come back a couple days later and get your completed bushings. So with that said, here's my new press. Of course, it is the Harbor Freight, the 20 ton shop press. Um, it's really simple design. Didn't take me too long to put together. It's really just some angle iron uh, with some holes drilled in it and a bottle jack. So it's actually pretty simple and easy to put together. Like, so of course I just said it didn't make sense to really buy a press, but I couldn't turn down an excuse to buy a new tool. So even though my garage is already kind of tight, I want to find room to fit this thing in here. Um, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space and I feel like it's something I'll be glad I have in the future. Uh, Cause I probably will be doing work while I need a press at least a couple times uh, going forward. So just to save me the headache and I figured it's a good opportunity to learn. So what I have here, this is actually the rear knuckle from a GSX. So because it has the uh, the spot for the axle and it's the upper control arm. So the upper control arm between the four cylinder and the six cylinders are actually the same. Uh, so it doesn't matter. And you probably already know that the rear suspension of the Galant and Eclipse third gen is actually based off the second gen. So again, this kit for the third gen will fit both of these. So what we're gonna be replacing are these two bushings on both sides of here and of course these bushings in the knuckle and now if you look at the bushings on this uh, knuckle here they're actually in pretty good shape normally you see these uh, they're busted they're cracked up uh, but these look really good so I'm not sure exactly what kind of life this car went through and how it ended up you know getting stripped and parted but we're gonna replace uh, this guy here this one here at the bottom and then this one here where this lower control arm attaches to. Now I actually won't be using this control arm just because I have a tubular one, again, from the third gen Eclipse or Galant, which is gonna replace it. And these are, and these parts are interchangeable. The thought process behind that is that the, that the tubular steel is gonna be stronger than the stamp steel. So that's why I'm going with that. And it also saves a little bit of space. As you can see, it's the profile of these two parts. Uh, obviously the tubular steel is going to be a lot more narrow and it's going to give you a little bit of clearance if and when you happen to need it. I'm also going to be installing my SPC camber kits. I showed you guys these already. Uh, it's just a couple washers and a little bracket. And a little bracket that helps you adjust for camber. Like So I really just want to install these all in one go. I've also got this AGS uh, Rust Solutions product. It's a lot like POUR 15, if you're familiar with that, where you can paint over rust is what POUR stands for. Um, it's supposed to be a permanent coating that you don't have to worry about. Like I so said, all you have to do is remove any of the loose rust and it comes out pretty good. Now, the good thing about this stuff, it has some UV protection built into it, unlike the POUR 15. So you don't have to worry about top coating it. Um, now, in my case, that's not gonna be a big deal because these are suspension components anyway. Like now, of course, I won't be installing uh, my rear knuckle yet, but being that I need to push these bushings in, I figured I'd go ahead and get it all done at the same time. And I also have, of course, a front knuckle from an Evo. I'll probably coat this as well once I get that, once I get that taken apart. And last but not least is my subframe. Now this thing is kind of bulky and I can already tell it's gonna be a pain to work with, uh, again, just because of its size. But I'm going to try to go ahead and get these bushings pushed out of here as well. So I do have some solid bushings for the rear subframe. They're from Bulk Metal Craft. They're aluminum, uh, and that was, and that is what will go into the rear subframe and for the diff. But for now, we're going to focus on these because this is more likely uh, to be what you guys are doing if you want to improve any slop in your rear suspension. 
All right, guys, so we're going to start off with the upper control arm first because it's the most straightforward. So I'm going to get this knuckle out of the way. So on the upper control arm, uh, we're just going to remove these bolts on either end here. And these are 14 millimeter. You're going to need a socket and then something on the back side to keep it from spinning. Simple enough. And because we have the camera kit, we won't be needing these. These can go into your scrap metal pile. Like if you ever work with suspension parts, you know it's never the same. Uh, you can work on one side that'll come off easily, uh, and then the other side you have to fight with, you know, for days in some cases. But as you can see, the <clears throat> but you can just look at these two bolts and tell this one has very little rust on it, whereas this one is completely coated with rust. I probably have to knock this out actually to, to, to get it all the way out. I'm definitely gonna clean this up before I put it back in here. So see, this has a little bit of rust on it, but this one, the whole, like half of it is coated with rust. So you gotta love suspension parts. And like, unfortunately, uh, these don't have a lot of surface rust on them. So all I have to do with these is probably just spray them down with some soaking water. All right, so I'm done with this for now. Now I'm gonna start working on the knuckle. All right, so just to make this easy, I'm gonna switch to my half inch impact just because I know that particular uh, quarter inch one is a little underpowered. So I'm gonna be using my uh, my rigid half inch here. Now, of course, it has to be said, you shouldn't use these chrome sockets with an impact gun. Uh, you can't break the socket, but I'm gonna do it anyway. All right, so the rear knuckle is pretty simple. We really just need to take off uh, these four bolts on the back side here. And of course, the half inch makes this light work. Pull these bolts out. Uh, if you guys are considering a half inch impact, uh, Rigid is definitely a company I think you should look at. Uh, I've been thoroughly impressed with this thing. Uh, just the power, it's not really heavy. It's not as bulky as especially some of the older ones. Uh, there's the model on it, if you can see that. I've been really happy with this. I got a few different batteries. Uh, so now I'm just gonna hit the, uh, the back of the shield with this mallet to see if I can separate it. And just like that. It comes apart and you have the knuckle and the lower control arm. You have the hub, which actually was spinning pretty freely, but of course I'll clean this up and inspect it uh, before I put it back together. And of course this is for your rear brake. All right, so this last bolt is down here on the control arm. Uh, this is actually a 17. It's gonna same thing, I need something on the back to hold it and we'll be done as far as taking this apart. And of course this sensor is actually held on with a 12. All right guys, so really just a few minutes later, we are ready to start the process. Oh, what I'm gonna use anyway is some sockets that are gonna line up with our bushings here. So what these are is a rubber bushing inside of a metal like housing that's been pressed into this. Like, so we're gonna need to push that entire thing out, including that outside metal ring. So when you choose your socket, uh, you wanna make sure that it fits inside of the control arm itself, but also is big enough to push on uh, that metal ring as well, because you don't wanna just push out the rubber piece. All right, so I've got my two different sockets. So as I said, for the knuckle, I'm gonna use this one inch socket. Now this is a standard socket, not an impact. Uh, you wanna keep in mind that impact sockets are gonna have a thicker wall on them because they're actually a softer material. And for the upper control arm, I'm gonna use this 7 8 So it's just a little bit smaller, but it would definitely do the job. So I mentioned, like, so I mentioned that we're gonna need a socket uh, to push out the bushing, but we're also gonna need another socket, a fairly large socket. And this, in this case, I'm using this uh, 32 millimeter uh, for the axle nut. Uh, we're gonna position this like so. And if we do this right, this is gonna push the bushing out into this larger socket. Now you don't have to pump it too much because you'll hear um, a pop as you do this and that's the bushing releasing uh, from the housing and it'll drop down into the larger socket like now it is recommended that you wear some safety glasses uh, just in case now I've already used this press um, and it handles these bushings no problem like it's easy for this thing no effort on my part uh, but the big thing is it does take a long time to pump so you can see I really only have about maybe a two or three inch gap there I need to cover that's also why I raise these plates up Like, so now that the press has made contact, I don't need to hold it. Um, I can let the press do the work and it'll push that bushing right out. So in this very little effort on my part, 
should hear the house is like and that's the big pop that I was waiting for so now the bushing should be free I'm gonna go ahead and give it a few more pumps just to make sure but this press it makes it easy I can do this one-handed and I'm not putting a whole lot of effort outside of the outside of the repetitive motion needed to actually you know pump this thing because it doesn't move very far all right so I think that's to be good grab this release the press I'm not gonna let it all the way up just because I wanna save myself some time. So this is what we have. Doesn't look like I pu pushed it quite far enough, uh, but as you can see, this is the perfect size socket because it gives you enough room to pull this completely out. Hasn't damaged this. So I'm just gonna put this back in here and just push, push this bushing the rest of the way out. One eternity later. So I did run into a little issue. Looks like I'm gonna have to use my deep well uh, 32 just because the bushing is actually larger uh, than this socket. It's out far enough. I might be able to just smack this with a hammer and get it out. And then I'll get my deep well 32. All right, so that worked like a charm. Here is the bushing. You can see it is largely undamaged and as well as the housing is clean. Uh, so that's what you want to get is just get this out in one piece without damaging anything. So now we're just going to flip it over and do the other side. But now that i got both of these out, I'm actually going to clean these up with some soap and water and get ready to put that uh, rust coating on them before I push the bushings in. Now for the knuckle, it's a bit trickier uh, just because of the shape of this thing. As you can see, it's pretty big and it's a pretty awkward shape. And so as you can imagine, these down here, uh, just especially this one is gonna be a pain to get to just because of the way it sits like but this top one shouldn't give me too much trouble like all right guys so i didn't film it uh, but you see i got it out like as i was pressing it i noticed uh, that it was a little bit more difficult than i thought it really should have been and if you look at the bushing you can see why so of course this one did come out damaged uh, but what happened is this 32 is actually too small to use uh, with this with this larger bushing. Like, so I was actually crushing uh, this bushing and the housing into this socket. Fortunately, I have a 36 millimeter socket too uh, that I'm going to use to finish the rest of these knuckle bushings. Like, so here's the 36 and this is actually a massive socket. So if you compare it next to the 32. It's quite a bit beefier. I had to order this or just to allow me just allow me to remove Honda axles. Um, but as you can see. It should fit in there just fine. Of course, it, this wasn't destroyed. Um, it looks like it would sit down in there perfectly. Uh, so this one is to be the one I'm gonna use to push the rest of the knuckle bushings out. As right, so I'm having to hold one end of the knuckle and kind of rest it on the press. So that was a little less dramatic than the other one, but the bushing is out. And as you can see, it just falls right out. It does have some damage on it, but that's no big deal. And if we look at the knuckle, once again, we see that it is not damaged. And this one-inch socket is a pretty good fit. As you see, there's more than enough space uh, to push the bushing out without damage and not get your socket stuck. Now I've just got to try to figure out how I'm going to get this one. Because as you can see, you can't fit a socket there. Socket can only go on from this one angle. Uh, but then how am I going to press it from the top? So I've got to figure out how I'm going to do that. Like, all right, guys. So I think i got something that works here. I've got the stand supporting the knuckle. And I've rested just the edge of this knuckle on this plate like so as you can see this plate has different shapes cut out onto it like and this one over here is this small semicircle and I, like and i just noticed i'm sitting here pumping but i think the press is at its full extension which is why nothing's happening uh, but i can see it on the back side it looks like the bushing is almost all the way out all right so there you go guys so you can see it pushed it most of the way out like it took a couple wax that time, but it's out and the knuckle is undamaged. All right, guys, so pressing those bushings out only took about 20 minutes, probably less than that. Like now I'm just going to clean these up. And for that, I'm just going to spray them off with some soapy water. And just wipe them down. The semi-clean rag. Again, I'm not expecting perfection. And fortunately, uh, this stuff should be pretty forgiving. But this coating will stick over just about anything other than loose rust and then do the same thing on a knuckle like fortunately these parts aren't that rusted so i don't have to worry about any of that i'm just trying to get uh, the loose dirt off all right guys so this is what i have and this is what i'm going to show you uh, me coating um like i said so this is stuff i'm just going to give it you know a good shake i've already shaken this a little bit off camera but you want to make sure it's mixed now when you get a new can of this stuff it's actually going to come with a piece of tape on it as well as these little clips uh, just to help keep it sealed you don't want this stuff to dry inside of the lip like if it happens to leak because it, then it will make it almost impossible to get the lid off but it seems i'm not gonna have that problem yeah so fortunately i didn't have to worry about that and there you can see your product now if you notice now the first thing you'll notice this stuff is actually extremely 
uh, liquidy. It's very watery. Like when you go to apply this stuff, you really only need to use a brush. Um, like these here can be picked up at Harbor Freight for like 60 cent. It's a two inch chip brush. They're pretty cheap. I wouldn't use these for anything important, uh, but for this stuff, it's perfect because once they're done, um, you know, there's no big deal about throwing these away. Like it is very runny, uh, so you don't want it to drip on your, uh, you know, on the lip of the can. And we're just gonna brush this stuff on in a light coat. Now, of course, you can do this with a roller brush, but I feel like for these small parts, bristle brushes uh, work a little bit better. All right, guys, so I'm pretty much done. And seeing how these parts won't see like a lot of abrasion or impacts, uh, one coat is probably gonna be enough. We're really just trying to coat it and protect it from rust. Um, now, we'll let it dry for about 20 minutes and then come back and then touch up uh, the spots like where it's resting on the bench because I know I didn't get those coated, or at least not well. But you really don't need to do two full coats. Now, for reference, I've already done, done half of it. And I have barely used any of this, if you guys can see that in there. So I think the paint level has dropped maybe a quarter of an inch. Uh, and that's doing the entire project. All right, so one can of this stuff, this is a one quart can, will go a long way. Now, if you're looking to coating your suspension parts, I would definitely recommend doing this. Um, it's cheaper than powder coating, especially when you consider how far a can really goes. And it'll hold up just as well. It's easy to apply. There's pretty much no prep work that needs to be, that you really need to do outside of knocking off like loose rust. All right, guys, so the parts are done. I actually let them sit out here for a couple nights uh, just because I wasn't able to come out here. They look pretty good. Of course, the finish isn't going to win any competitions. Um, that it do, they do have some runs in them again just because how liquidy the stuff is and I wasn't really concerned About getting a good finish. It was more about Just getting them coated getting them dry so I can get these bearings or these bushings pushed in But I'm happy with them. They of course look a lot better than they did before and now they shouldn't rust in the future right, So now I just got to get a few things ready so I can push these bushings in right, So a couple things you'll notice on the instructions. It actually tells you where each component goes So I know for my upper control arm. I'm looking for bushing 8167 and how you know which one is which it's actually stamped into the bushing so if you guys can see that it's very light on this one but it's 8167 ones that are a little bit smaller on this one it's a little bit more clear so that's how you know which bushing is which uh, so what you're gonna need now of course is your grease that it comes with and some gloves uh, you don't want to do this with your bare hands just because this stuff is actually really sticky like so i've got my bushings for the control arm what i'm also going to need is some Teflon tape. What this should do is help eliminate any of the like popping and squeaking noise that's normally associated uh, with urethane bushings. Um, what that noise is is that these, just because of their makeup, will tend to bind. Like, and the Teflon tape in combination with the grease will help, you know, eliminate most, if not all, of that. Now, of course, there are going to be people who say it's not going to do anything, uh, but the way I see it, I would rather go ahead and do this now while they're out and have it not do anything than install it without it. And then have to deal with that noise because I'm not gonna, you know, be pressing these back out. So it's really a no lose situation. Of course, Teflon tape is cheap. If you put it on uh, beforehand, before you install the bushings, and it works, then that's great. You saved yourself a lot of headache and just annoyances with driving your car. If it doesn't, then you haven't lost anything. Like so, all we're gonna do now, but a very light coat on this brass guide. And you don't need to use a lot of it. Of course, these have very tight tolerances. So what's gonna end up happening if you put too much on it? Of course, it's gonna just push out. Uh, any of the extra now i'm just gonna take some of this teflon tape it just helps stick the teflon tape to it like so we do the same thing on the uh outside of the bushing and we're just gonna coat outside of this so now it is good to go and i'm actually not gonna use the press uh for this next step i actually found it was easier to just use a little contraption i put together like so what i have here is just a long bolt a washer and in this case, I have a pallet bushing uh, from the automatic transmission um, because I don't have another one of these big washers. And then, of course, I need a nut to go into the end of the bolt. Right, so what we're going to do is just uh, line the bushing up on the bolt and our makeshift washer on the other side. And I'm actually going to need this other smaller washer on the back of the pallet bushings because the hole is so big. I think I may have stripped my bolt here. The bushing is mostly in there. Um, good thing is I don't see a lot of that Teflon tape pushed up toward the outside. Uh, so that is a good sign. All right, so yeah, so I was actually able just to press that in the rest of the way with my hand. Uh, so now the bushing is in there. Now all I need to do 
is install these metal sleeves. So those are gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little bit of the grease on the sleeve. So I'm gonna line this insert up in the bushing and just press it in as far as I can by hand. All right, so I got the bolt in as far as I can by hand. So now I'm just gonna use my little contraption here just to get it the rest of the way. All right guys, so that side is in. I'm not gonna bore you guys with the rest of them. It's all the same process. Uh, just take your time. It, it can be kind of time consuming. As you can see, it didn't push the Teflon tape out, so that's a good sign. I do have a little bit of excess grease that I'll wipe off. Um, then I wanna give these a good clean down. All right guys, so we got everything done. I didn't have too much trouble with the bushings. Everything looks pretty good. Um, I did have a couple spots where the uh, the Teflon pushed out, but again, that's no big deal. That's not gonna hurt anything. Um, and what is under there should help. If it doesn't, it's no big deal, like I said. So you can see on the one uh, back here, I've got the camper kit. Again, these are for the rear, so I'll be getting, I'll be getting those installed um, here soon. And of course, these uh, GSX knuckles won't be going on uh, for a while, so they'll just sit on the shelf. All right, guys, so that's it. I know this has been a long video, and I hope I covered everything in detail to help you finish your project. Like, I will say you really only need a press for pushing the bushings out. Um, that bolt method seemed to work a lot better. I was having trouble just trying to maneuver like the control arms around the press itself, and it really just became a hassle. But once I got that bolt, like, so I think with a thicker bolt, you'll probably be able to push it in more easily. It'll keep it from flexing, but that was really the only issue, just a matter of getting it to go in straight. So, so of course, I wanna thank you guys for watching the video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Have a great day.